Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. In this question, we're given a sequence, uh, x1, x2, x3, and so on, of positive real numbers, and they're recursively defined. So we know that x1 is equal to 1, and then xn plus 1 is equal to 1 divided by x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to the last prior value squared. And that's true for n greater than or equal to 1. Now this question, it's got five parts to it, and each part is asking us to prove something about this recursively defined sequence. Now before I get into it, I have to, have to um, point out that this question is very, very difficult. Um, so difficult that I actually am still stumped by part five. So I've managed to work my way through part one, two, three, and four, but part five still eludes me. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'll create a separate video for each of these parts. Um, each part probably warrants its own video and you'll be able to work through the approach I've taken for each of those parts and hopefully one day when I can finally work it out I'll have a video for part five as well. I've reached out to um, a whole bunch of people uh, and, and on that front I should say thank you to Eric Rajan who's um, been really helpful to me in bouncing ideas back and forth on how to tackle this question. I've reached out to some forums, I've reached out to my network. Everybody who um, I've shared this with can't, can't work this question out. So by way of background, it's a, it came from a, a four unit exam um, given to the, the students at Borkham Hills High School and it was deliberately um, prepared as an exam that was basically a combination of all the hardest possible questions, really specifically trying to prepare those students for what ends up being the final question on the Extension 2 math exam for the HSC. So it's unsurprising that it's hard, but uh, I, I have not come across a question this hard. And as I mentioned before, I still can't work out part five. Hopefully, eventually I can, but uh, at, at this moment of recording this video, part five still eludes me. But what we'll do for this video, I'll focus on part one, um, which is to show that xn is less than or equal to one on the cubed root of n minus one um, for n greater than or equal to two. So that's what we want to prove. And for this particular part of the question, induction is what jumps out at me as the way to go here. So what we do is um, we want to show, show that xn is less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of n minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 2. And we're going to, we're going to do this by induction. So that just will require us to work through the various steps of induction. So step 1 is to show true for basically the first acceptable value of n, which for us will be 2. So we'll show that it's true for n equals 2. So in our case, the left-hand side will be x2, which is 1 on x1 squared. And we know that x1 is 1. We're told that. So that's just equal to 1. Easy enough. The right-hand side is 1 on the cubed root of 2 minus 1, which equals 1 on 1, which is also 1. So therefore, the left-hand side is less than or equal to the right-hand side, in this case, equal to. So it's true for n equals 2. So that's part 1 of the uh, induction process. Part 2, or step 2, is to assume that it's true for n is equal to k, some number k. Um, now, if that's the case, then we know, or we're assuming that x to the k is less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of k minus 1. That's kind of what we're assuming is true. Um, what I'll do rather than move on immediately from there, it will be helpful to expand on this a little. So we know xk, um, x to the k is equal to 1 divided by x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to the prior one, which is x to the k minus 1 squared. 
So 1 divided by all of that is xk. So that is less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of k minus 1. And if I just move each to the other side, we get the cubed root of k minus 1 is less than or equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x to the k minus 1 squared. So that, that will come in handy for the next step, which is step 3 is to now show that it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. And this is typically where all the hard work happens in the induction process. So if n is k plus 1, our left hand side is x to the um, k plus 1, which we know is we get x1 squared plus x2 squared plus, and we'll go up to x to the k, but I'll just write x to the k minus 1 squared plus x to the k squared, because that that format will come in handy. So it's 1 divided by all of that. That is our left hand side. Our right hand side is 1 on the cubed root of k plus 1 minus 1, which equals 1 on the cubed root of k. So that's our left hand side and our right hand side. Now what I'll, I'll have to go over the page here. But um, from step two, we know that um, uh, x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to x to the k minus 1 squared. We know that that's greater than or equal to the cubed root of k minus 1. We know that because that's what we got to here, that I've just written it the opposite way, but this is greater than or equal to the cubed root of k minus 1. So that's, that's going to come in handy. Now the other thing we know from step 2 is that x to the k is less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of k minus 1. That, that is what we've assumed to be true. And therefore, x to the k squared is less than 1 on, I'll just write this in the format, k minus 1 to the 2 on 3. So the cubed root of k minus 1 is k minus 1 to the third. When you square it, you get to the 2 on 3. So those two things are true. We know that from step 2. But in terms of now trying to show that um, this is true for k, n equals k plus 1, what I'll do is I'll start by looking at what is 1 on x to the k plus 1. What is that? Well, that is equal to 1 over 1 over the sum of the squares, which just means we get all the sum of the squares. So we get um, x1 squared plus x2 squared plus, plus x to the k minus 1 squared plus x to the k squared. That, that is 1 on x to the k plus 1. Now, what we've, what we've just reminded ourselves of means that this bit here is greater than or equal to 3, or cubed root of k minus 1, and this bit here is less than or equal to 1 on k minus 1 to the 2 on 3. We, we know those two things. Um, so what we can conclude, we can say that 1 on x to the k plus 1 must be greater than or equal to um, cubed root of k minus 1 plus 1 on k minus 1 to the 2 on 3. It must be greater than or equal to that. Um, now that, that means 1 on x to the k plus 1 must be greater than or equal to just the cubed root of k since we know that the cubed root of k must be um, uh, less than the cubed root of k minus 1 plus k minus 1 to the, I'll just write this to negative 2 on 3. The cubed root of k will always be less than the cubed root of k minus 1 plus 
this thing and uh, you can try that out for yourself to, um, to convince yourself. I, I personally, to convince myself, filled out a spreadsheet of many, many hundreds of thousands of values of K and this was always true. Um, hopefully you can see just by inspection that, that this, this is true. Um, so if x to the k plus 1 on x to the k plus 1 is greater than or equal to something that's bigger than something else, then it must be also greater than or equal to that something else. So once we can, we can uh, give ourselves the comfort that that is true, we can then reverse the signs, which means we get x to the k plus 1 less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of k. And that is what we needed to prove. So therefore, um, it's what we're trying to show is true for n equals k plus 1. So the final step is just to state what, what we're trying to show. So by induction, x to the n is less than or equal to 1 on the cubed root of n minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 2. And that's part one of this question. Now, in the context of this question, that's the easy part done. And even then, I would say it would be highly likely that many students would probably get caught up or, or a bit stuck, perhaps at this point here. That's kind of where you need a, a little bit of, I guess, creativity or, or um, just thinking outside the box to to get to where you need to get to. And even being able to think of that required you to stick around in step two for a little bit and not just move on from um, assuming um, what we're trying to prove is true, thinking to do a little bit more expanding upon that to get things in a helpful format. So that's the key, I think, to this part one. But again, as I mentioned, this is the easy part done. Really parts two onward are where things start to get tricky and I'll deal with those all in separate videos. So hopefully you've been able to follow along so far. Um, induction is uh, just one of those techniques where uh, you just gotta practice it, but you're, you're basically just following steps and um, more often than not, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's usually in step three that things might get a bit tricky, but um, hopefully with enough practice, you, you can get good at it. Um, so that's all for now. Um, I'll now move on to part two in uh, the next video. So uh, tick boom. <laughs>